Hello and welcome to Detroit Reforms. I am your host, DJ Oliver, and today we're at the Carr Center for the Performing Arts, where the Arts League of Michigan develops, promotes, presents, and preserves the African and African-American cultural traditions within our community. We'll get more in depth with the Carr Center in an upcoming segment, but first we head to the University of Michigan, where cellular molecular science collides with music and dance. Imagine that I'm in the cell here, and here's part of the cell, and it's an important part, I use this. Autophagy is a process in which our cells break down parts of themselves. As with anything, including furniture, parts of the cell wear out. So how does a cell get rid of these things that are no longer functional? And this is the process of autophagy. Almost every month, there's a new connection being discovered between autophagy and some aspect of human health and disease, cancer, some types of neurodegeneration, diabetes, heart disease, liver disease, various muscle diseases, you name it. That means we have to really understand it if we want to be able to manipulate it for therapeutic purposes. Products seven H are synthesized through the action of enzymes one through seven. I've been teaching introductory biology for over 20 years and I'm looking for ways to make this subject accessible. And one of the questions I asked was whether short videos or including art would help. David does pretty much everything to, I, I see an exact scale. I had been aware of the paintings of David Goodsell for a number of years. I'd always admired his work, which shows a more realistic depiction of how a cell might be than we typically draw them. Dan contacted me oh, 10 years ago now and wanted to do a painting of, about autophagy. At that time, he was not interested because we didn't know enough about the system. The data just wasn't there, but now, now there's a lot more data at all levels for structures, for concentrations. For We corresponded for months talking about the science behind it. The illustrations I do actually is, is working in a very interesting scale level which is intermediate between anything we can see experimentally. But you can only get down so, so fine with that because of the size of, uh, of, of light waves. Each time he gets a new discovery in his science, he comes to me asking for a new painting. So it's real fun to see his research progressing and helping him document that. The minute I saw that U of M email through the composers list, I thought, Wow, I've always been wanting to do something like that for a long time. The next evolution of this was to go to Wendy Lee and ask if there was any way she would be willing to collaborate on a musical piece that would represent autophagy. There's one point in the piece that the hand motion has to be like I this. I really want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited about this because I had always wanted to collaborate with scientists, but I just didn't have the right occasion to do that. How does one section move to the other, or are the proportions equal, or is there a climax or something? Or? Anytime I'm working with someone who doesn't know the field well, in particular an artist, they ask questions that make me look at autophagy in a slightly different way. Wendy asking me about the speed of certain parts of the process, which I had not thought about, but she needed to know with regard to the tempo of the music. I hadn't appreciated as much in that sense of being a climax, but it's clear that as it you know, gets to that point, and then all of a sudden it does change in this boom, 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 boom. And we've done paintings, we've done the music. I had thought that a natural progression would in fact be to do dance. And some of the people that I was talking to said, well, you know, Peter Sparling, a professor of dance, is in our building. He played me Wendy's music, he showed me Dave's illustrations, and then he explained to me what autophagy was. And a red flag went up, and I thought, I don't want to have dancers mimicking what cells do. And so I took directly from your Scientific American article those six major, you know, processes. I hit upon some common denominators as Dan started describing the process, as if they were animated, as if they had wills of their own, and I thought, aha, this is it. This, this is a hook. Curl up, surround and engulf, seal, cut through, break down, and release back. It was fascinating to hear Peter's interpretation of autophagy. Does it mean that there is less energy or more resistance? less energy of the organism to motivate itself through a space or more resistance. So, so we're kind of playing around with the illusion that 
dancers can create. He was asking questions and, and explaining how he was thinking about the process in ways that I had never imagined. But now we had to truly put it down on paper, as it were. What you have done is to provide me a script that can have multiple interpretations. I, I read a narrative into it. My role is largely as production director. I put the visual images and the music and the dance together. So what I'd like to do now is to show Dan and the folks what it is we're going to film up at the video studio on the floor from above. Okay, so can we do that first? I asked Wendy if she would sit at the piano and play macro musophagy. That then brought together the work that Wendy originally made, inspired by the cellular process, with the dance that I made, inspired by the same thing. And then stop right there, gals. I think that's where it would end in this version. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Hey. That's we had never seen any aspect of the dance before. After it was over and we were walking back, we were discussing what did Peter mean by this part? Why were there these dancers in red high-heeled shoes, for example? Since it is not absolutely literal and not absolutely obvious what's being depicted at every step of the video, it fosters discussion. For the video version, we were able to go into the Deuterstadt video studio and shoot against green screen, and then remove their bodies against Dave's beautiful medical illustrations. It's as if the bodies are within a cell, and it becomes like animation. The cell carries out a dance of spring cleaning 365 days a year. As someone who's a neuroscience major, this is something very different than anything I've ever seen. I think it would be most helpful in a teaching environment for non-science students or people that aren't really uh, well-versed in science. Scientists are finally becoming aware of the fact that they need to do a better job of explaining what they do to the public at large. Funding is becoming tighter, more difficult to obtain. And the only way to possibly reverse that is to get more people to become supportive of basic research. To learn more of U of M's collaboration, head to DetroitPerformers.org.